Actually, it was a very interesting choice. The money, the girl, all my life. And obviously, the first two will be of no use to me without the third. Yet the price for my life might well be, to use a common expression, murder. This is Hungry Peacock, starring Basil Rathbun and Anna Lee. A suspense story of the one thrilling moment in a man's life that can only be called High Adventure. Adventure, the top of the world in action drama for men. Presented by Scholten, makers of Old Spice after shave lotion. For that top of the world feeling after every shave. Cool, clean, and wonderful. That sounds like a pretty good way for a man to feel, doesn't it? And I'm willing to bet that that's the way you'll feel when you use Old Spice after shave lotion with your morning shave. You'll find there's a wide awake freshness about Old Spice lotion that adds real pleasure to your shaving. And you'll agree with me that Old Spice lotion is the perfect finish for a shave. Uncomfortable razor burn vanishes instantly, and your face feels smooth and comfortable. Old Spice lotion has a clean, fresh, masculine scent that men prefer, and the handsome ship-decorated bottles are a pleasure for a man to see and to use. No wonder more men buy Old Spice than any other aftershave lotion at a dollar. Try Old Spice aftershave lotion tomorrow morning, and you'll use it every time you shave. And now to the high adventure story, The Hungry Peacock, written and directed by Robert Monroe, starring Basil Rathbun and Anna Lee, as told by the man who lived it, a man called Norman Cortland. A very interesting name, Norman Cortland. I've used it for years, and I assure you, I gave a great deal of thought as to the best name for a person such as myself. Naturally, I wasn't concerned with the legal ways of adopting a name. I've never concerned myself with legal matters. They always bore me, to put it mildly. Norman Cortland conveyed the precise impression I desired in my uh, contact with life around me, and so I deliberately... <laughs> well, that I, I wanted to tell you of a little adventure, not of such prosaic things as names. Um, uh, this one, the big one, began, I believe, that day Mug and I were experiencing a small difficulty on the shore limited. Mug was my devoted traveling companion, and then, at uh, times, well, I needed him. Uh, the situation was one that I should have been able to handle with my customary ease, a little matter of tickets. Conduct is coming again. Mug, you always worry about trivialities. Well, it's a sense we can't stay in the washroom all the whole trip. Have I ever forced you to stay in the... Well, hold it, here he comes. I don't like the way he looks. Nonsense. You'll find your ticket, Mr. Cortland. Why, oh, no, it's the strangest thing. I was sure I put it in my wallet. You're positive I didn't give it to you, Mug. What? Oh, no, no. Well, Conductor, you must have it listed on your reservation schedule. We don't. No? No. Oh, that's extraordinary. Uh, Miss Summers, my secretary, made the reservation a week ago. We don't have any record of it. Oh, most distressing. Yes, In that is. event, I suppose we'll have to take potluck with whatever you You have. lost your passage ticket with the reservation, didn't you? Uh, why, yes, I must have. Uh, they were together. And you'll have to buy tickets in addition to the space. Where were you going? Uh, Chicago. With space, that'll be $62.50. Very well. You make out the form and I'll sign it. I see. Uh, we'll be in the club, Gog. Uh, come along, Gog. Sure. Just a minute. Uh, yes? I think you better wait here. Uh, what is it? Yes, you wait right here. I won't be long. What got into him? Bring the bags, Mug. What? Quickly. I don't get it. We're in luck. The train's stopping. Well, what's the hurry? One of the secrets of uh, graceful living is to remember faces. Faces? Mm -hmm. uh, we have met our conductor friend before. It came to me not a moment too soon, did it? Sure. What did? Uh, two years ago, when we took the uh, Century West, uh, they will always believe you once, but never twice in the identical situation. Yeah. This was the same conductor. Yeah. Open the door. I can't. I got the bag. All right. I'll do it. You want me to go first? No, I'll make it. Hurry up, Mug. The train's only stopped for a signal or something. I'm coming. There. There it goes. It was a nice ride while it lasted. Uh, these bushes will stain my trousers, I'm sure of it. Yeah, we would have to hitch a train with the same conductor. Now what? Hey, I saw a road up on the other side of the ravine. Maybe we can, uh... Come a ride? Oh, it's better than walking. Beg from someone, plaintively hold out your hand and beg someone to give you out of the charity of his soul. All right, all right, soul. boss. I should know better. Mm -hmm. Come on. Let's see what the road you saw has to offer. Some food, I hope. <laughs> Almost a forest, isn't it? Yeah, 
I wish we could have promoted the club car before we got off. I bet they had some food if we'd asked. Mug. What's up? Look. Hey, it's a car. Obviously. Mashed up, ain't it? Must have cost around 4000 Well, anybody who can afford to buy a buggy like that can afford to crack it up. Hey. What is it? Guy's still in it. Let's see. He bet he never knew what happened. Mm, certainly did. You can say that twice. I wish you wouldn't keep on using that expression. Why should I say it twice? I don't know. Get his wallet, if it's still there. Huh? Oh, yeah. He won't be needing it, will he? No, certainly not. Yeah. <clears throat> I get it. Well, now let's see. How much? Is there any money in it? Yes, I suppose so. You suppose so? Maybe you don't know it, boss, but we don't have any... What are you reading? It was in the wallet. Listen to this. This will introduce the bearer as our representative for any further negotiations on the Connolly matter. He is empowered to make any contracts on our behalf. Signed, William Summers, National Trade Fast Corporation. So? Is there any money in a wallet? Addressed to Arthur Leeds, Brooklyn. Arthur Leeds? Arthur Leeds, if I remember correctly, is a, a wealthy eccentric. Yes, he is. Will that stop us from eating? Mug, one of the first rules of graceful living is to take advantage of opportunities that luck drops into your lap. A wallet full of money, you can say that. Mug. All right. We will go visit Arthur Leeds. Yeah, well, what do you want to do that for? You don't owe him no visit. Oh, yes, yes, but this, this poor man does. This poor dead man, so um, we'll do it for him. Hey. You beginning to think, Mug? It says empowered to make any contracts on our behalf to bearer. Contracts in for money, don't they, Mug? Yeah, yeah, they do. So we will see what kind of contracts Mr. Arthur Leeds will make. This may be our big promotion, as you call it. Yeah. If he has 10 or 11 million, he won't mind uh, a deal involving, say, a quarter of one of those millions. Do you think so? And you're the guy that can take it from him. Uh, with this letter of introduction, I am the guy. You see, I'm hungry too, Mug. Exceedingly hungry. <laughs> As I suspected, Brookline, where Mr. Arthur Leeds could be found, was not too far from the spot where Mug and I left the train. With the aid of our new funds, we were able to hire a local man to drive us to his estate. It was a huge castle on the peak of a hill, done in extremely bad taste, the extremely bad taste of one who, well, a man, you know, who uh, uh, has too much money and didn't bother to learn how to live with it. <laughs> the letter of introduction served... Um, exactly the purpose I intended it to. It is always the ambition of one such as myself to effect a casual meeting with a fool with money. When I met Arthur Leeds, it looked to be my one great opportunity. Uh, this over here, Mr. Cordell, this is a little piece of art I bought down in New Mexico. I think I've discovered a truly great new artist for the world. Yes, I think I have. Now, how much did you pay for it? Uh, 18,000. I think it oh. was 18,000. Yes, it was 18,000. <laughs> but it was cheap at that price. Yes, cheap. it was, I assure you. Yes, I agree with you. Well, I'm certainly glad to meet someone who appreciates true art. I do, I assure you, Mr. Leeds. Um, your purchase of that uh, painting was certainly the work of a great artist. Shakedown artist? What? what? Uh, Mug is merely using an old expression. He meant he would like to shake the hand of the man who did the job. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> You'd enjoy talking with Andrea. She likes artistic things, oh, too. your wife? <laughs> well, not yet, but soon, soon. Come on, she's in the studio. Well, perhaps she doesn't want to be disturbed. Well, you don't know Andrea. Andrea, honey. Yes, what is it? Uh, this is Mr... Uh, I, I always forget names. Norman Cortland. How do you do? How do you do? Mr. Cortland is quite an authority on paintings, I'm finding out. And he... There's something wrong, honey? I, uh... No, of course not. I'm sure we'll enjoy talking, Mr. Cortland, if you enjoy artistic things. I especially enjoy watching an artist at work. I see. I, um... Is, um... Is this something you were doing yourself? Yes, I dabble at it. Well, Andrea's very modest. She's quite an artist in her own right. Yes, I can see that immediately. Can you? <laughs> Is that so strange? No, I suppose not. She's also a countess, but you'd never know it the way she acts, would you? No, I certainly wouldn't. You can say that twice. What? what? Arthur, Arthur, you must put your guest at ease. Uh, why don't you show the man where he can safely leave the bag? Yes, yes, I will. You, you just follow me. Huh? Sure. Some dump you got here. Cost me over 400000 but I like it. Don't touch that, if you please. Uh, pardon me. Um, it is such an exquisitely ornate knife and the long slender blade. Wonderful workmanship. I had it in a certain position. I'm going to sketch it. Of course. Is it yours? One from Arthur's collection. He collects many strange things, I gather. Yes. Yes, he does. I should hate to have someone come at me with something like that. It is designed to be thrown, Mr. Cortland. Yes. Will you be leaving tonight? You know, 
I would scarcely take you for a countess. No? And one with a talent for painting. That is quite an unusual combination. Is it? I'm sure Mr. Leeds must find it very attractive. Perhaps he does. A kindred soul who loves the unusual and the lure of nobility. Add to that a beautiful woman. Oh, what chance does he have? What chance does anyone have, Mr. Cortland? To one not completely skilled in his trade. None. But to a competent person? It merely offers a challenge, an interesting complication. Yes. Must we play with words? What do you mean? Come now. There's no need for pretense. I realized the situation the moment I saw you. I'm a person of quick decisions. There is enough for both of us. Shall we work together? I don't understand. I have no intention of upsetting your uh, promotion, as Mug would call it. I am merely saying there is enough for both of us. I'm not greedy. Go on. And perhaps it will be easier for both of us if we cooperate and work together. I'm always in favor of cooperation instead of conflict. Do I make myself clear? Yes. Well, what you say, Countess? I haven't the faintest idea what you mean. Oh, very well. I'm sorry you'll be leaving tonight, Mr. Cortland. I'm not. I think you will. It is strictly against my principles to walk away from opportunity, shall we call it. Another word for ten million dollars. Or a portion thereof. No portion thereof. I think I will say. I told you. What chance has anyone got? Well, if there must be competition. Good luck in the game, Countess. Thank you, Mr. Cortland. <laughs> I'm taking a rest, Mug. So many rooms in this dump, you get lost. Yeah, we'll have to work fast because we don't know how soon our dead friend in the car will be discovered. And now that you've um, disturbed my rest, it is best that I get started. Come on, Mug. Well, what do you want me for? I don't want the clever Miss Andrea walking in on my conversation with Mr. Leeds. Oh, you want me to be lucky? at? Simply wait in the hall outside. If she comes, be sure that I have ample warning. Sure, sure, I get it. And don't let anything stick to your fingers. What? Don't steal anything. Oh, boss, I wouldn't. You could ruin all my work, and this is one we don't want to miss. Big, eh? I think so. The big, big one. We can uh, retire for a number of years if I'm successful. Well, that's more like it. Uh, but we have to work carefully. I think Mr. Leeds is in here. Now, I want you to stay out here in the hall and don't leave, do you understand? I'll be here, boss. And if Miss Andrea comes, and if she starts to come inside, you come in with her. I get it. And if I'm lucky, we will soon have a chance. Down! Now, now, look what you've done. Yeah. If your conception of a joke is to shove me on the floor, dust and lint completely covers my coat. Well... I guess it's okay to get up now. Sometimes, Mug, your crude sense of humor baffles me. It ain't my sense of humor, boss. Look, sticking in the door. What? I'll pull it out for you. Oh, knife. Yeah, I seen it coming. Just caught the flash of it. Would have got you in the middle of the back. <clears throat> there. Hey, you want it? No. Instruments of violence always nauseate me. They can do more than that, you know. Evidently, someone doesn't like me. Yeah, you're cutting in on her territory. Her? Yeah, her. Oh, that's absurd, Mug. I'm sure she's not the type of woman... Oh, oh, I was right. I thought I heard someone knock. Come in, Mr. Cartlett. Come in. Do what I told you, Mug. Yeah, sure, boss. Well... This is certainly an interesting place you have, Mr. Leeds. Well, you haven't seen the real interesting part yet. No, you haven't. No, I'm looking forward to it. Well, sit down, make yourself comfortable. Thank you. I suppose you're anxious to get down to business? Well, yes, of course. Well, so am I, Mr. Cortland, so am I. As a matter of fact, I was just going to call you when you knocked. So now that we're alone, let's get it over with, and uh, then we both can relax. An excellent idea. Now, about the Conley matter, I won't pay a cent more than a hundred. Only a hundred? Why, that's certain out in keeping with your name and reputation, Mr. Leeds. Well, that's my final offer. And I don't see what this has to do with my reputation. One hundred thousand dollars, no more. Hmm. Very well. I don't want to argue about money. I would like it in uh, cash. Yes, yes, I know. Your National Trade Fast Corporation made that clear to me at the start. I have it here with me in the house in small bills, as you That's ask. Very considerate of you. They're not considered, only I keep a bargain when I make it. Naturally. And I want you to leave immediately. Now? Yes, now. It's rather late. I'll have the money ready for you in a briefcase. And I'll call a taxi cab for you. Uh, but I don't know if we can catch a train. You can drive to the next town. I don't want you here another hour. Do you understand me? Very well. I'll meet you at the side entrance in ten minutes. Thank you. Mug? 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 Oh, that's strange. I told him specifically I Are you want... looking for your friend? Oh. <laughs> yes, yes, I am. I think I can show you where he is. Oh, you're very kind. If he's still alive. I told him to meet... What did you say? I think he's downstairs. In the dungeon, I suppose. This castle must have dungeons. It of does. I just found it. Well, that sounds interesting. 
You asked me if I would cooperate with you before. You should have taken it when I made the offer. All right. Just go through the side entrance. I think you'll find your friend. The side entrance? I'll make out some way. Why don't you show me where it is? It's not hard to find. I'm very interested in the side entrance. You shouldn't be. I'll only take you to the side. You'll have to go in yourself. Go in? I don't think I could stand it again. What's going on here? Come on. You'll see for yourself. <laughs> Danger from an unknown murderer, a missing man, and a skillful game of conquest in a house of mystery. Danger, conquest, mystery. They are no strangers here, for these are the keynotes of high adventure. You know, good grooming is an important part of every man's everyday life. That's one reason why so many men make a habit of using Old Spice aftershave lotion. Once you've tried Old Spice lotion, I'm sure it'll become a part of your daily grooming you'll never want to miss. There are two generous sizes of this quality lotion, a dollar and a dollar seventy-five. Look for the handsome red Old Spice cartons at drug and department stores everywhere. And now, Shulton would like to take the opportunity on this, our last broadcast of the season, to thank the author and director of High Adventure, Robert Monroe, and the members of the cast for their fine performances over the past months. We also thank our listeners for their wonderful loyalty to the program and to Old Spice Aftershave Lotion. High Adventure will be on the air throughout the season, and we at Shulton will be with you again early in the fall. Meanwhile, keep on listening to High Adventure for the top of the world in action drama, and keep on using Old Spice Aftershave Lotion for that top of the world feeling after every shave. Now, back to the high adventure story, The Hungry Peacock, starring Basil Rathbun and Anna Lee. The story of two people who came to conquer with money and death as a prize for the winner. It is told by the man who lived it, Norman Cortland. Uh, she was a beautiful woman, and I had failed to trust beautiful women before, and this time was no different. Uh, she said nothing as I followed her down the stairs and through the hall. There was a growing fright on her face as we turned and went down a second set of stairs to the left. And it is not the practice of one accustomed to the wilds of graceful living to let one's true emotions show visibly. There was far more going on in the ugly castle than appeared on the surface, and evidently we had walked into the middle of it. I would have to play my role carefully, and that was difficult until I knew my adversary. The stakes now seem more than a paltry hundred thousand. My life is the one item on which I put no price. That's the side entrance. I see. You can go in by yourself. Uh, just one moment. Yes? <clears throat> you said... We both might need some help. I'll get away. Uh, uh, you're going with me through the side entrance. No. I was nearly murdered once tonight, and I resent it very much. When? Um, a side entrance should lead outside, but you said go in. Please listen to me. Do you want to live? That doesn't require an answer. Then listen. I don't think you... The sucker is wise. Do you understand? He's what? wise. What makes you think that? And he's not the kind to call the police. The police never worry me, but He I... has his own ways, and I've seen them. Through this side entrance, no doubt. I thought it led out to the garden, and I went down. Oh, believe me, we've got to get away from here. And leave a cool hundred thousand... What do you think I'm leaving? He was going to buy my family estate in Spain for half a million. <laughs> yes, he was. For a half million dollars. I didn't know that old one still was in use. It isn't funny. <laughs> the sucker doesn't need the police and he's wise. I suppose he kills those he doesn't like. That's exactly what he does. <laughs> and it's how he does it. Oh, nonsense. Well, where's your friend Mug, as you call him? Where is he? Oh, probably searching around the place for something valuable he can put in his pocket. I'll show you. Are you coming? Yes. Look. Very interesting. The old medieval torture rack. Don't you see? Oh, this must be the Chinese water stone. And there's an iron maiden. Very wonderful collection. You're not looking. What do you mean? The stains on them. Yes. Well, look at them. Why? I believe that... They're blood stains and recent. Oh, that's absurd. Is it? I don't want to take the chance. Look at the signs over each one. Five thousand. Two hours on the rack. Fifty thousand insanity by water torture. One hundred thousand and over, a pound of pressure on the rack for every thousand until death. Now do you see? Oh, he's insane. He has the money to do what he wants. The police should know this. Are you going to tell them? No servants. What? That was what bothered me. Dust and lint on the floor. He has no servants, has he? I don't know. He just brought me here this morning. Did you see any? No. A perfect trap. No witnesses, no evidence that can't be explained by an eccentric millionaire. A perfect trap. And you walked into it. So did you? 
He had no idea I was interested in it. No, it couldn't be. What? The Conley matter. Nat National Trade Fires Corporation. That's the only answer. He, he set a trap for someone else, and I walked into it. Oh, he's crazy. You can see he is. I've got to find Mug. I heard some groaning from the room beyond. That's what frightened me. Come on, we'll see. Uh, hey. Oh! Hey! Mug! Hey, I, I've been yelling my head off till I can't yell no more. I'll cut you down. Floor, floor started sinking, left me hanging by my thumb. Oh, it's horrible. You have to find something to cut the ropes. Hey. I ain't got all my weight on him yet. Not all. I can still touch with my toes. Oh, hurry. It must hurt terribly. Yeah, you can say that twice. What? Yeah. I, an incredible piece of luck. I hope so. The knife here on the ledge. Down you come, Mug. Yeah. Are you all right? Yeah, I, I think so. I told you to stay by the door upstairs. Now you said to let you know if she comes, so I figured the best way was to watch her. I followed her down here. Then she left and went back upstairs. I turned to follow her, and I got hit on the head not five minutes ago. And somebody strung me up. Oh, uh, while you were unconscious? Yeah. Well, let's get out while we can. I'm for that. Come on. Sure. Aren't you coming? What? Oh, yes, yes, I suppose so. I wish you'd hurry. Please, boss, hurry. I don't think there's any need. Well, I'm getting out. Well, you'd think there was a need if you got hit on the head and got strung up by your thumbs. Our only chance is to leave while he's still upstairs, if but we I'm can. I'm still upstairs, my dear. Oh. Uh-oh. Just stand where you are. What are you going to do, Arthur? I don't know. I thought you were going to meet me up at the side entrance, Mr. Cortland. Oh, sorry, I couldn't wait. For a hundred thousand dollars? Uh, you wouldn't have had it for me. No, no, I treat swindlers in my own way. So I see. Don't you think my rate's reasonable? <laughs> Very amusing. I'm sorry you three had to find my conference room altogether. I'd planned to take care of you one at a time. Arthur, you mustn't believe what people say. I didn't want I had to... my detectives trace your estate in Spain, my dear. The deed you offered for a half million dollars is a clever bit of printing. How can you say that? I can because I know. And as for you, Mr. Cortland, and your friend, stand back. I know how to use this automatic. I learned just for such instances as this. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> Two bullseyes in the Iron Maiden. The National Trade Fast Corporation is the biggest swindling outfit I've ever encountered. We didn't do nothing. I've had my we rates. National. I've had my rates for treating swindlers, Mr. Mug. And all of you come above the 100,000 mark, which, as you can see, means death from the torture rack for each one of you. A pound per thousand for 100,000 and over. That means each of you will be tied on the rack, flat on your back, a rope on each lip. <laughs> then we start to pull you apart. A pound of pressure for each thousand dollars you tried to steal from me. We only try for a hundred thousand. That makes fifty thousand apiece. That means we're in a smaller bracket. I'm sorry, I don't see it that way. Oh, you're insane, completely insane. Well, let's get down to business. I always take care of swindlers promptly, bring them up here. Oh, Court, can't you do something? <laughs> I'm afraid Mr. Cortland is so dumbfounded or frightened he can't speak. Boss. You first, Mr. Mike. Just climb on the rack, lie out flat. Oh, look, can we talk to On yourself? the rack, please. Well, you might as well shoot me and get it over with. I'm sure you prefer to live even a little longer. On the rack. All right, all right. Andrew, you tie the ropes around his ankles and his wrists. Then, then we'll pull him apart. See what makes him tick. Huh? Oh, no. On the rack, Mr. Mug. Please, I, I didn't do Get your bags, Mug. I think it's time we were leaving. Huh? Stay back, or I'll shoot. I don't think you will, Mr. Leeds. I will. We wish to leave, and we shan't bother you again. I'll shoot. I'm sure you wouldn't kill such a beautiful woman as Miss Andrea, or such a handsome man as myself. Now, would you? I'm warning you. Come on, Miss Andrea. Mug. Yeah. yeah. You'll have to shoot me to hit Miss Andrea. Go get the bags, Mug. We'll meet you outside. Sure, sure. Watch out. Go on, Mug. Uh, but he'll shoot. No, he won't. I sure will. Mug. Yeah. Go on. But he'll throw me. Have I ever given you a wrong steer, as you call it? Well, no. Then go get our bags, as I tell you. I'll shoot. I'll get you right between the eyes. Boys. Go on. He won't hurt you. You sure? I'm quite sure. You're asking for it? Go on, Mug. All right. If you say so. Now, Miss Andrea, shall we go? I, uh... Good night, Mr. Lee. Yes. And thank you for a very interesting experience. Uh, yes. I assure you, I shall never forget it. I'll shoot. Of course. Come on, Miss Andrea. I'll shoot. I, I'll shoot you so full of holes, you'll never swindle anybody again. Yes, I'm sure you will. Good night. You come back here, or I'll shoot. We can leave through the front entrance. My hat and cane are in the front hall. You were wonderful. We'll talk about that later. It's a new Homburg, and I have such trouble finding hats that suit my face. Oh, hurry, please, hurry. If you wish it, my dear. Oh, please, before he changes his mind. <laughs> Mm. 
And that must be our train coming now. I hope Mug gets here in time. Are you sure he's all right? Perhaps we should have waited for him. Oh, he's quite all right, I assure you, Miss Andrea. But you didn't tell him we were... We have a, a standing agreement to meet at the nearest railroad station when we are forced to take our leave in, uh, well, you know, somewhat forced circumstances. Uh, so don't you worry your pretty little head. Why are you staring like that? It's hard to believe. Believe what? You don't look like a hero. Oh, I'm sorry. You made him have to shoot you first before he could kill me. Did I? Oh, oh, yes. That was very brave. Thank you. And such iron nerves it took to face him down the way you oh, did. Oh, it was nothing, nothing really. Well, I think it was. Yeah, do you? <laughs> well, I merely... And it taught me a very important lesson. Yes, my dear. I'm going to get a job. Oh, I see. When even you were outsmarted, what chance do I have? I can't face down an insane killer with a gun. I always thought brains were all you needed. I don't have that kind of courage. You do. I hope you're very happy. I will be. So now you can be respectable. Yes, Court. If brains can't win over brawn and courage, oh. then... Oh, I was looking for you, What boss. kept you so long? The train's coming. Well, if I knew it was coming, You've I'd been drinking. Yeah, just a couple with good old Leedsy. Leedsy? Oh, I see. Very, very nice guy. We had a long, long talk. Long talk. All right, all right, all right. Here's our train. What's this, Leedsy? A very clever guy, too. Very clever. Hey, you know why he threw the knife at you, boss? Yes. Well, goodbye, Miss Andrea. The scarest, that's all. Just the scarest. He was laughing so hard, I thought he'd break a rib. Laughing? It was very funny. <laughs> hey, he's an amateur, say, uh... A psychologist? Uh, yeah, that's it, what you said. He believes everybody's got guilty feelings. So to know the truth about people, he takes them up to the castle and he scares them. And if they got something on their mind, it comes out. I see. Ain't that funny? <laughs> we were scared. Come on, Mark, come on. Goodbye, Andrea. Hey, and you know what the blood was? Catch him. What? <laughs> Yeah, and he had blanks in the gun. Hey, you knew it, didn't you, boy? Well, yes, 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 of course. Come you on. You know, when you found a knife to cut me down so convenient, it was all a fake. Ah, uh, lazy you said you Of did. course, no, no, no. Get on the train. Wait a minute. <laughs> you sure got brains, boss. <laughs> I was really scared. But he does it to everybody, he said. Has fun scaring people into being themselves instead of phonies. But you were smarter than him. You figured it out. Brains, court, wait. Yes, my dear? It wasn't courage. Why should it have been? I never doubted my intelligence. And you'd let me get a job and be honest. You have the beauty of it, not enough... To... Beauty in your brains. Nothing could stop us. What? Work together. We could do anything. Beauty in brains. Oh, yes. Uh, conductor, we haven't any tickets, but at the next stop... Just get on I'll board. Get... We'll check space for you in Washington. Come on, Court. Thank you. We can do anything, Court. Three of us. Beauty, brains, and brawn. Right, Mud? Washington. You can say that twice. Washington. Washington. The Hungry Peacock, a story of one thrilling moment in a man's life, starring Basil Rathbun and Anna Lee. Until next week, when you can again hear High Adventure as part of a full hour and a half of High Adventure and mystery over NBC at this time, this is George Hogan saying, wherever you are, those around you live it, and perhaps you yourself may someday experience it. That one thrilling moment of a lifetime that can only be called High Adventure. Now, here's special news. Introducing new Shulton Shampoo in the unbreakable plastic bottle. New Shulton Shampoo has an up-to-the-minute formula which leaves hair wonderfully clean, dandruff-free, easy to manage. And ladies, new Shulton Shampoo actually gives your hair beautiful additional luster. And here's a real shampoo first. Shulton Shampoo leaves hair pleasantly scented with Old Spice. New Shulton Shampoo in the unbreakable bottle bears the good housekeeping guarantee seal at drug department and cosmetic stores everywhere. A new kind of mystery, $1,000 reward. Hear it today on NBC.